Welcome to our strip search panel. So uh, I'm assuming everyone here has seen the panel, uh, has seen the, the show, the first episode that launched yesterday. I understand. How is that possible? <laughs> um, well, uh, actually, what's kind of interesting is that uh, the artists, two of the artists here, Erica and Mac, uh, who are both from Portland, and um, Erica's exhibiting. What booth are you at? 26 something? 2615. 2615. Um, we actually haven't talked with them at all in, since the since filming wrapped. And uh, I would really love to take this opportunity to ask them some questions, if, if possible. Uh, I mean, we've been doing some some very sort of playful fake interviews online and whatnot, but for really reals, we have not talked. Uh, but uh, I guess in general, like, how was the experience for you? <laughs> Hear that? Is, is that this working? Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Sorry. We're cartoonists. We're like, oh god, keep our voice low. <laughs> so, what did you think of the first episode? Pretty rad, huh? <laughs> <laughs> no, I was really excited. Yeah. It was really great to see, like, seeing the little clips in the at the start of everybody whenever those came out a couple weeks ago. Were mm -hmm. like, that was awesome to see, but. Uh, like back, seeing the footage back in the house and everything, it was really funny because it's been two months and I feel like, like it's it's stra like it's it seems very close, but it also seems really like kind of funny and far off. Like it was great though, like I was it was awesome. Well, you guys didn't get to see all the diary room stuff, right? So now you get to see all the private stuff that everyone was saying about you behind your back. <laughs> yeah, I think that's gonna be the uh, yeah. the Hon best part or the worst or the worst part. <laughs> that, that's honestly the part that I'm, I'm dreading the most is hearing what people had to say about me because it's like, oh, I, I really like all these people but now I'm gonna find out what they were really saying. <laughs> <laughs> what? Am I supposed to do something now? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I'll be honest, we've seen that first episode um, I don't know. I, I've probably, probably seen a dozen it, times. I, I've probably seen it fifty times now, and oh, just like just various cuts of it, and, and uh, two things sort of point out, uh, you know, stick out at me. One is uh, the intro sequence on the lake is like still gives me chills whenever I see it. <laughs> it's like, like a real show. Yeah, like, yeah. and I'm, I don't know if you ever see like Alex's uh, Alex, the guy with the long uh, flowing hair. Uh, when it goes to Alex, like his hair like, like blows. Like I swear to <laughs> God, we did not like have like one of those fans. No, it's like it's like Fabio. It was yeah. just the natural <laughs> sea breeze came up and made him a man. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, and then of course when um, when Amy realizes that you are Erica Moen, <laughs> and uh, and the look on her face of oh my God, is that Erica Moen? Oh my God, it is Erica Moen. <laughs> Should I? Tell Wait anyone? a second, no one else knows it's Erica Moen yet. Wait, I have to be really cool. Yeah. Oh, and then she just sort of dials it down. Well, um, okay, so I saw her make that face when I came in the house, and my first thought was, oh no, she knows who I am, and she hates me. <laughs> I, honest to God, I, that, that's completely what I thought. And, and the other thing is like, so, you know, I, I saw her make that face, and then as we're talking, I was like, oh wow, she's so funny and cool. She's too cool to ever be my friend. <laughs> <laughs> I know all of you very well, and that's not true. Um, uh, <laughs> no, I mean she she is that cool, and she's also my friend now, so <laughs> it's pretty pretty rad. I mean, <laughs> so we're, we're, at some point in time, we're going to actually open this up to an open Q and A. So feel free to think about sort of what your questions want to be. Um, but yeah, like Mike and Jerry, like, wh what was your experience? Uh, this, just walking the experience in. Experience was very intense for us. You know, we we were not at the house. We only saw the contestants when it was time to kick somebody off. <laughs> so they came to us for judging and then went back to the house. So well, one of them. One of them went back to the house. Yeah. 
so our experience was very different. All we had to go on was their stand-ups. And if you've seen the show, you can see all the cardboard stand-ups around the studio. So we would base our ideas of what we thought these people were like on their drawings. And then when they would come in, um, we, had to, we had to send somebody home. So we only hung out with them when it was the worst possible <laughs> moment for, for them. You know, it was really weird. Yeah. yeah, and throughout the day we would give you notes mm -hmm. and photos yeah. and, and clips and whatnot to sort of study and... It was like being Sauron. Yeah. Because it's like, <laughs> essentially with all these ravens that would just periodically come back and give us information about where the fellowship was. Mm. Fellowship is the artists. Mm. Indeed, indeed. And honestly, it was a, a... When we started it, I was expecting it to be very easy to be sort of the Simon Cowell and be a jerk and kick people off. And once you have them standing in front of you, and you can see how serious they're taking it and how important it is to them, I mean, it's going to change somebody's life, then you feel like, oh, wow, it's, this is really important. I can't just be a jerk. Like, I mean, I could, I did, but it was, much, <laughs> it was much harder than I thought it would be. You know, it's interesting because a, a lot of the guest judges that we had had that same experience as far as uh, them not, I don't think they understood the gravity of, of uh, of what they were doing until they were there. And yeah. at that point, they're like, oh my God, like what I'm doing is actually affecting this person's life. Yeah, yeah, because that's the thing. It's like, we made it up. You know, we invented strip search. Strip search did not exist prior to our having made it. But that doesn't mean that it's not true or real. And I think that when you are in a position to really hurt someone's feelings, in this context that you completely invented. Like, it's not, in ma it's not made up to them. It's not invented to them at all. Mm -hmm. They were not privy to that. They weren't looking at an Excel spreadsheet saying, oh, this would be a good time to torment people or, <laughs> right? The, the reality was that we made something real and there is, an, there is an incredible opportunity in it. And being judicious about who ends up with that is a, was a tremendous responsibility. And I would not describe it as amusing. Like, it was incredibly serious when you're doing it up there, yet being judging. So, and, and this hasn't really been revealed um, uh, yet. I mean, you'll see on, I think, Thursday when a artist will be eliminated. Friday. Friday. Sorry, Friday, when a person will be eliminated, when an artist will be eliminated for the first time. Um, and, uh, and I know this is being streamed, but oh well, who cares? Uh, like, the process that we created um, to do that, I, do you want to describe it? Like, I think it's okay to, to if describe you think it. It's, I would ask you if you think it's okay. <laughs> I, th I, think, I think it's okay to describe okay. it, yeah. So uh, <clears throat> when two people are brought in front of Jerry... When two people love each other very much. <laughs> when two cartoonists are brought in front of Jerry and I... Before us. Before us, for judging, uh, they have to compete in a cartooning competition. And what we did is we had a, a wastebasket full of pieces of paper that each had an idea written on it. So, for example, you might pull out a piece of paper that says cats or one that says money or space, okay? And it's full of these ideas. Each cartoonist would pull one piece of paper out of the basket, and they would each have an hour and 30 minutes to create a comic strip based on those two ideas. So you might get uh, cats in space, okay? So each artist then has an hour and 30 minutes, they go to their workstation and they have to make a comic strip um, in front of Jerry and I while we interrogate them. Yeah, and so just so you know, a typical penny arcade strip, which is three panels, it's yeah. in color, but it's three panels. Yeah. From writing to final art is probably four or five hours. Yeah. So an hour and a half is savage. And it's probably a criminal act. And there's, and there's no one being a jerk to me while I'm drawing. Except me. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, and so then when they're done, they leave the studio while Jerry and I look at each piece and we decide which the best comic is. Winner goes back to the house. Loser goes home. It was pretty brutal. So without any spoilers, I'm curious to know, uh, in general, what you two thought of that process. Uh, a, the elimination process. The elim I, I think that was a, a really awesome challenge. Um, I, <laughs> I know you're trying to be very careful here. <laughs> 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 uh, 
Uh, hold on, let me think of yes or no questions then. Yeah, thank um, you. Yes or no, that would be better. Um, <laughs> were, was it harder to draw while Jerry and I were there abusing you? Not too hard. Okay. Because she works in a studio, so she's yeah. used to... Uh, but I feel like, yeah, I do a lot of drawing while I'm talking to people. or I mean, it's, it's less abusive. Yeah, but there's, <laughs> but there's cameras on but, you. There yeah, are oh, yeah, these no, two people that harder. essentially... Well, yeah, and definitely. also, strange tools. Strange. Like, artists are very much, at least in my experience, Mike says I'm not an artist, but... <clears throat> well, you're not. My, my understanding is that I paint with words, Michael. Nope. <laughs> not a real thing. <laughs> artists have... You know, they have an environment that they create in. And if you take an artist out of that environment and then give them tools, even if it's all the same tools, there's so much of that environment is a, is a mental one. And how much of that you can reconstruct in a strange place is a pretty serious challenge. Well, so I work at Periscope Studio in Portland, Oregon. That's right. Which is, has two dozen professional cartoonists. And, um, and so I'm in an environment where people are always uh, talking at you and always right. being like, hey, Moen, and then garbage flies at you. Um, like That's action-packed. It's what? It's action-packed. Packed? It's exciting. Action -packed. It's, oh, action-packed. <laughs> I thought you were saying it as actually packed. I was like, packed with what? But action. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so that uh, that is maybe that was, um, uh, yeah, so that, that's what I do. <laughs> well, you, Mac. I think it was my, are we, yeah, no, I think that was my favorite part of the, part, part of, part the, of everything. Like, it was yeah. completely, like, yeah, it was, really strange to be thrown out of like what I'm used to. Yeah. Like I, I work by myself and it's relatively uh -huh. quiet. Uh, not too quiet, but, um, but it was still, I think that's why I liked it so much. It was such like a different experience and it was really like, I mean, it was like the most stressful thing for that period of time. <laughs> like, I don't know if I've ever experienced so much stress like compacted <laughs> into such a tiny <laughs> little window, but like, I think it was a really good like, that was my favorite thing. It was the crucible. Yeah, there we go. Indeed. Indeed. Um, what there, was your... Oh, oh, I was going to see if there were people out here that had questions. Oh, yeah, sorry. If, if anyone has any questions, feel free to just raise your hand. We'll just call on you at this point. <laughs> nope. Oh, hey. Yeah. So, um, when you're in that challenge you have an hour and a half, You may want to repeat the question. Yeah, so. I'll, I'll repeat it because I actually thought that was a really interesting part too. Because uh, you know, when people pull their ideas out and they go sit down at their table, right, and we say start, it was very interesting to see which artists first started writing and which artists immediately started drawing. Hmm. Um, and so the question is basically, when you have that hour and thirty minutes, how do you, where do you start? Do you want to go first? Sure. Um, how I feel like. Well, I think I tend to work drawing initially. I, I, I start like visually thinking and kind of throwing it together, but it's really funny to like, and then it's, it tends to be like a really big editing process. So kind of like just tossing things out and pulling them back in um, and to have that compressed into such a, a, like a tiny window instead of like going back through a sketchbook or like um, kind of like cutting things out or like thinking over time to try and like condense that. Like it's a panicky little like, selection process. Well, and for me, I start writing first. So uh, I, I take you know those two keywords, and then my brain starts working around what other connections do I make to these words. And so like if it was cat and what? Space. What, cat and space. And I think, OK, well, what has my cat done recently that was funny? And how can I incorporate that into space? Or like I just try to make word associations. And then I start building up my script from there, and editing and revising, and then drawing comes last. Yeah, th there were artists that would come in and write and sketch on paper for the first 30 minutes, you know, before they ever got to actually trying to make their comic strip. You know, it's like, mm -hmm. it's pretty interesting. Right. And then there's also, I mean, that editing voice, like you don't know what level is correct. Because the environment is so chaotic, like you, you, don't, you don't actually know how much editing of your own idea is required. And so over and under editing, in, under those circumstances is just, part of the game. Other questions? Uh, oh, let's, let's go here, and then we'll go there. I <laughs> um, just wondering, I guess we get both perspectives here, uh, with regards to in the elimination challenge, when you guys 
chant, like the words, are you designing the comic with them in mind, or are you designing it for the general uh, audience? Or how do you like good you question. evaluate it all? Yes, yeah, so the question is when they make that strip in front of us, are they trying to please us <laughs> specifically? Like, are they trying to write jokes that they think that we will like, or are they just trying to make a good comic? Um, I know for, for our point of view, we were not looking at the comics and saying, I mean, I, I obviously you've seen Penny Arcade, you know what we like to make, but in terms of what we think is funny and what we can appreciate in comics, it's between the two of us, it's extremely broad. Um, and I don't feel like any of the comics we saw were especially like, like tailored. Tandering? Yeah, especially, I mean, I, I, didn't one. I guess there was one, there was yeah. One. Um, <coughs> yeah, pandering to us is actually not a good idea. Yeah, I mean, we, we brought all these people onto the show because they had such strong and unique styles. And so I think what we wanted to see from them was them doing their best work, you know. Uh, but yeah, they, what, what, what do you guys think? I was not trying to pander to you guys. I yeah. was trying to do an Erica Moen comic. And I actually... Which generally panders to us anyway. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> um, and yeah, I, I'm still really proud of the the comic I did. I, I think that was solid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel like there was so little time but to shove pandering in there as well. Like, yeah, I, right, like, like, <laughs> I didn't even have time to pander. <laughs> yeah, I mean, just from a third party uh, uh, perspective, and again, like I wasn't actually part of the judging process, but sitting in the audience, um, it seemed like you were very much looking at the technical instruction like the technical construction of a comic. And that was actually really interesting because I've never actually seen you guys uh, talk about what that looks like and to be able to actually lay it out like on a panel by panel, like how, like where the punch goes, where it doesn't. Well, I was of. actually surprised to learn that I know something about this. <laughs> it was really fascinating. <laughs> I mean, I guess we've been doing it for a really long time, but yeah. I mean, I, and I know my process, but I can look, I can sort of look at it and sort of see its sort of flow. Like I can see the line that goes through it. Well, yeah. and even if we don't necessarily appreciate a punchline, we can look and see if the structure is good, right? I mean, you can right. tell. You can tell. Uh, it's the same thing. Like if you go to um, a movie or something, right? Like you might not like the movie, but you're like, well, it's a really good movie, though. Like you know, mm -hmm. yeah, I can I can understand why so many people like it. Yeah. I didn't personally dig it, but right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, any other questions? There was. Oh yeah, we were going back there. Oh, no, we're going one behind you, oh. and then we'll jump for yeah, to you, and then we'll jump up. You're going to love it, man. Get ready. at you. <laughs> really, really great. polish that question. Yeah. <laughs> See how he split artist and writer? He could have just said, no, I heard as it. artists. <laughs> yeah, no. But yeah, I heard it. Like yeah. any <laughs> reasonable person, he splits those and makes what I think is a pretty important distinction. <laughs> so as an artist and someone who writes, <laughs> go ahead. Bad. <laughs> it's the same, like, so have you, have you seen the um, the new hire episodes, yes. yeah, of PATV, right? And so you you can tell that there's there's a relationship between strip search and the way we hire people, and I wouldn't be hired at Penny Arcade either. <laughs> like, no, I could not get a job at Penny Arcade. Um, I think I could. I think I would have done very well in the elimination, like where you're given two ideas and you you got to make a strip, but the actual game part, right? Like all the stuff they do that's leading up to getting eliminated, I don't think I would be good at playing a reality TV show. Um, I like watching them a lot. Uh, but no, I, I don't you, think you think I that could, would give you the experience you, you needed? I, and in fact, going into this, I thought like, oh, it'd be really fun to do it. But after watching what they went through, no. Uh -uh. <laughs> <laughs> I would do it again tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm there too. All right, now we're here. Yeah. Your time to shine, my friend. Oh, you. <laughs> Where do you see yourself going with like the Penny Arcade brand? Where will the Penny Arcade empire go next? Uh, that's a Robert question. <laughs> we just make comics. Cyberware. Uh, you know, I think it really comes down to how do we expand and serve the same audience. Um, how do we really monetize the different verticals? <laughs> yeah. don't, listen, don't listen to him. Um, <laughs> Uh, you know, really looking at expanding the, uh, the content for the existing audience without alienating them and without 
essentially screwing over what we have right now. And Web you know, 4.0. Yeah. Oh! Web 4.0. Didn't expect that. Web 4.0. You know, actually, really quick question. Can either of you watch a reality show the same way again? Like, have you tried? Yeah, I watch a ton of reality TV. I yeah. love that stuff. And uh, yeah, actually, I so I just watched the Real World Brooklyn, which came out in two thousand nine, <laughs> and and watching how they did the the you know the the confessionals and then just the regular yeah. footage. And for the first time watching, it, I was like, I know how that works. Yeah. I know what's <laughs> going on. So. Yeah, I haven't seen one since we started the show or finished the show. Mm -hmm. But I feel like I would enjoy it a lot more than I did before. Which is not to say that I didn't enjoy it before. Sure. <laughs> but like, just like a little frosting on my reality <laughs> television. Reality television cake. Cake, yeah. yeah. There's a question over there. Yeah. Um, in relation to the film in question, Eric, I was wondering if you had a chance to pitch uh, a reality show to Robert. <laughs> they combined Six Feet of Pregnant with Zip Skirts called Natal Nerds. <laughs> yeah. Le not now. Not, not now. Not later. No, I know. I ignored it. It's <laughs> uh, there was a question over here, blue shirt. I didn't mean to reduce you as a human being to the color of your shirt. I'm sure that you have a lot going on. Let's say yeah. Mr. Blue Shirt. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, so what reality TV shows inspired Strip Search uh, is the question. For me, uh, I'm a huge fan of Hell's Kitchen, so that was a big one for me. Um, the idea of, well, and Top Chef and uh, Ink Master, like, I really like shows where you craft. see crafts, like people who are good at a craft, you know, pitted against other people who are good at that. You know, watching, like, I, I can't cook, and I, I don't know if food tastes good or not, like, from a chef's point of view. But I love watching really talented chefs eat eat and compete. And so for us, that was the idea, right? Like even if you can't draw or you don't make comics, <coughs> the idea of watching people who do love to make comics and are super good at it compete against each other, that was sort of the, the catalyst for the show, right? right. Yeah, for, I liked, you know, Project Runway and RuPaul's Drag Racer. <laughs> Those, those are my shows. I would say there was very little RuPaul's Drag Race in Strip Search. <coughs> well, bonus content. Yeah. <laughs> the only thing that I watch actually is uh, is Amazing Race, and but the but honestly, like most of the uh, legwork for Strip Search was done uh, with a couple things in mind. One was uh, the new hire process. Uh, second was the bachelor party episode that we had done, and a lot of the planning is, is very similar in nature. Uh, and then, of course, there are uh, a lot of parallels with Strip Search and the Omegathon. So those experiences uh, really inspired a lot of what happens uh, within the show. Uh, right here. Uh, no, so the, f the second question, if you work digitally in Illustrator, are you at a disadvantage in this competition? No. Uh, the way the competition worked when you came in front of us for judging, we had already sort of interviewed each artist beforehand, said, how do you work? What do you need to make your comic? And so when they showed up at the studio, we had a workstation ready for them with whatever their exactly. materials were that they needed, whether it's pens and paper or Photoshop or Illustrator or Wacom or Cintiq, yeah. we, had, we had people competing against digital artists with traditional materials and you know what I mean? Like we, 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 we saw pretty much every permutation of that. Um, you know, we had Mac laptops and Windows laptops. Whatever they said on the list they wanted, we had everything ready to go. And the uh, first question was, will there be a season two? It really depends on season one, right? Yeah, yeah, I guess we'll see how, whether or not people actually like it. I don't know. It, it, it was life-changing for me, and it sounds like the people who competed on the show um, got something out of it, too. We're so, thinking next yeah. season will be Strip Search All-Stars. We'll just bring back the exact same group. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah.
uh, will we see more of the bonus content? Like, I love the behind the scenes, you know, the making of you guys sitting around with Chris Holland for comic ideas. Okay, we stuff. have. Will we see a little bit more of that. We have terabytes of video. Yeah, right? I mean, I would imagine all that stuff's going to be on the DVD set when it comes out. But yeah, I mean, we're thinking about it. Like, we're flagging all that content. Yeah, it's insane. Uh, let's go rainbow hair. Uh, well, art and video games is pretty much all we do. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know what else we would make people compete at. That's really it for us, <laughs> art and video games. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Actually, I, w I would love to address this topic. So, Sorry, so Michael. What topic? <laughs> so, Michael Krahulik. Uh, come elimination time, what do you think was more important? Oh, art or writing? Yeah. Absolutely art. <laughs> <laughs> 100%. Yeah? Yeah. You're saying that during this competition, that bad art versus bad writing. Uh, I would say that there were times during the competition where I gave good art an edge over good writing. What about bad writing. Uh, Would you say that bad writing was completely unacceptable? No. Not if the art is funny. Within no. the competition. So don't remember, well, we, we, only, we only have a couple instances of this, so we have it all on record. Yeah, no, I'm saying that within the, <laughs> from my point of view as a judge, if I'm looking at a comic strip and the joke is only so-so, but the art is funny and makes me laugh, Yeah. I, I will, I'll go with that strip because I'll, for me, a lot of times, I have a real TLDR problem. Mm -hmm. You know, if I see a strip that's just text, I usually will not read it. Sometimes a, a chord of drool. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not saying, okay, we'll talk about it later then. Don't worry about it. <laughs> but I feel like that, you know, Jerry and I balanced each other out in that. We had to agree on a winner. That's yeah. right. You know? Uh, let's go with hat. <laughs> uh, explain the question. <laughs> Ooh. And then you judge it based on which one you like the most. I don't understand what you're asking me. <laughs> Do you know what he's saying? Like a bad writing competition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, a bad writing competition. Yeah, yeah. Oh, like yeah. No, no, no. Like a so bad it's good type. See, season two. <laughs> that sounds hot as hell. Let's, let's jump all the way to the back. Oh, well, we were not, yeah, this, is, this was very interesting to us, too. We did not have to do anything to make dramatic things happen. Like, yeah, if you just lock a bunch of artists in a house <laughs> and then force them to compete. Yeah, 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 because I was curious about that, too. It's like, you know, if we don't manipulate them, and obviously the structure is, is manipulation to a certain extent, but I'm saying if we don't purposely go in there and try to agitate them, Right, and try to create these blow-ups and outcomes like that. Are you, are, is there still going to be a human story in there? And the, the answer was totally yes. I was, I was, again, I mean, I was surprised at how willingly people fall into roles. Yeah, I mean, you, you can ask the artists down there. We, one of the things I hate about reality, I love the reality TV, but I hate it when you can tell that drama has been ginned up, you know? And, and we're not stupid people, like we can tell when that has happened. And there was never a point in the filming, right, where we came to you and said, you know, what Erica was saying about you, Mac, right? I mean, how do you no, feel about that? Like that? No. And he and listen, and he said a lot of shit. Oh yeah, <laughs> was no, a lot. Horrible. Like they yeah. yeah, it was pretty gross stuff. Yeah. But no, no. Well. Again, I was surprised at how light a hand we could maintain on it and still have it come out to have this in this epic arc. It was ridiculous. No, 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 they're real villains and you'll see them. <laughs> Some people are evil. <laughs> All right, uh, another question. The devil is real. 
Uh, you, yep, yeah, let's go here. Um, He's a real person. YouTube. YouTube. Despite having pay TV. Well, PA TV is. Did someone make that noise? Yeah, that was good. Oh. Uh, <laughs> PA TV has. All of it has actually been moved 100% over to YouTube now. Oh. Uh, there were some, a lot of compatibility errors with the uh, Penny Arcade TV before. Yeah, I mean. You, YouTube you can watch on anything. Like, it's just easier. I mean, think about We were just using a service called Blip. Yeah. All right. And um, Penny Arcade TV essentially is our collection of. Of, of shows that Stuff. we sort of uh, hand selected, and now, um, I mean, clearly you can go to Penny Arcade slash PATV and saw there still. Um, We'd be glad to have you. But it's also at it's also on YouTube. Great. Hey, good stuff. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> now, do you want to hear something very interesting? The video that you saw is not the video they saw. That's true, actually, yeah. In the video that they saw, we're sitting in front of another fire, and we're incredibly, like, I would describe us as nuts. We were, at that point, we'd, we, were, we filmed it before we really started filming the show, and we had this idea to play the, the role of these sort of eccentric crazy people who were also in love. It's not that hard. Also, but, but the love part is the thing. So we were like, it was a really weird video. Was, like, we were holding hands at one point and looking into each other's eyes. And... Uh, that, and that got edited out in post. And then, uh, yeah, eventually the, the, they came to us, the producers, and they were like, I think maybe we should film another one of these. Uh, it was so fucking weird. Earmuffs. Oh, it was so effing W. Well, it's too late now. Is that going to be one of the extras? No, I mean, that, that, that's the sort of thing that would be a nice extra. Because it is yeah, really we weird. It, so, unless you destroyed it, Robert, I don't know. It's genuinely something that but exists. But when, when it cut, when you watched the, the video that you did see... I was cracking up. Okay. Yeah, well, no, I, mean, I, I think really I was. Funny. On oh, the yeah, inside, I, mean, I was. The, actually, the first... Oh, well, here's the thing, is that so when we're working with um, uh, the editors on this, and Graham at Loading Ready Run is doing the editing on all this... Uh, the first cut that we got back actually was more real time where they were laughing at every joke. Yeah. And, but we thought that that was just, it, it looked forced. Yeah, so even, even though they were really laughing. Even though they were laughing. And so our feedback was like, you know, I really don't think it's necessary to show them laughing. Laughing at the jokes. And, yeah. and like, I thought that that meant to be, don't cut to them, but instead it was cut to them not laughing. Not laughing. <laughs> <laughs> so whatever. Yeah. Movie magic. But you had a question. Um, I have a, uh, I have two questions. One of them is because of your channel and both of them are asking if there's going to be more podcasts. Podcasts. <laughs> we, are, we have a plan for more podcasts. Okay. We have a long range plan. Um, and secondly, and not to like, depress things, um, do you guys have a parking lot wide special program test? Yes. <laughs> Or threats. <laughs> so, yeah, you had loved ones, I'm mm -hmm. sure, people who care about you. Yeah. Uh, what were you allowed to tell them? What am I allowed to say? <laughs> See, it's, yeah, it's that bad. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they were all under pretty strict NDAs. And, yeah. um, you know, that could get carried over into, essentially, if they told their, uh, you know, their spouse or, or partner, uh, they had to assume responsibility for that person, so... That's but it. we had people who, you know, had to leave jobs and could not tell their job why they were leaving. And they don't like that. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> they think you're lying. <laughs> no, I'm on a shows. They couldn't even say that. No. Nope. Yeah, we could. Back there. <laughs> Uh, I mean, all the challenges had some relationship to making comics. Um, There's only one. Yeah. There's one that we put in yeah. there to essentially sort of break the tension. 
uh, a little bit, and just because it had been so long of just nonstop. But yeah, I mean, like Mike said, every challenge is designed to either uh, uh, it is designed to showcase an element of what it takes to be an independent artist. Yeah, I mean, drawing Penny Arcade and making Penny Arcade is, you know, part of it is making the strip, but there's a lot about it that is not, you know, I mean, other, you know, what's very different about web cartoonists, you know, than traditional, like, Sunday paper cartoonists is our interaction <coughs> with our fans, our relationship with our business in terms of merchandising and all that stuff, like, there's, it's... Well, supplementing the income that you get from your artistic work with work for hire, there's a lot that goes into being a web cartoonist now that is not just drawing a comic strip, and so we tried to put as much of that into the challenges as we could. For, for example, merchandise is a big, is a big thing. But yeah. So, so were there any challenges for you guys that you thought, this is ridiculous? There was one where I did understand why you guys did it, but at the same time, it, I, it seemed pretty basic. Like it seemed like something that everybody would already be doing anyway. So I was kind of like, huh, really? But I mean, that was the only one. How cryptic is that? <laughs> We're adding no value to this. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely zero value. Excellent. Uh, any more questions? Oh, I, I pointed at somebody over here. Oh, sorry. This, the, I, uh, he has never asked the question, huh? All right. He's we'll, fresh. We'll come back. Is there anything we filmed that didn't work? Oh. Oh, did we ever have to do a re redo a challenge or anything? Oh, no, thank goodness. Uh, no, I mean, I can't think of anything. I mean, on, on my end, in the in the the judging part, that was all pretty solid. Yeah, know. short of a technical problem, because again, like a lot of the artists are using relatively sophisticated yeah. piles of technology. There was, there was actually one point during uh, an elimination challenge where Robert told them to turn the cameras off because the argument was getting pretty intense uh, between us about judging, like which comic should win and how the judging should work and all that. Uh, and we ended up having to step outside and cool off, and that was not filmed. But that was really the only part that, that I can think of where we stopped filming and said, this isn't working. We got into a fight. We did get into a fight. <laughs> <laughs> were our mics still on while we were out there? Oh, they must have. Oh yeah, I guess oh. so. That's what I'm talking. That's going to be that's going to be an incredible <laughs> program, Erica. Yeah, I hadn't thought of that. Huh. All right. Oops. Too real. <laughs> okay. Oh yeah, we were going to go here and then we'll jump back there. So you guys are obviously awesome. Mm -hmm. From your point of view, when you were when you came up with the concept for it, said, okay, now we have to actually like invite people to even want to do this. Uh, make us laugh, really. I mean, we were looking at the work that they were producing currently, and if we thought it was clever, funny, interesting, you know, it, it just had to be good work. Right. We were not especially looking for people who were going to be good on camera or anything like that. We, we were looking for cartoonists that would be great for this competition. So is this uh, like comments that you already read? Like no, no, no. I mean, we got... Over a thousand entries, and ninety nine point nine percent of them I had never seen before in my life. Yeah, I mean, I've been a fan of Erica's for a long time, but that's not. I mean, that that was not the norm in this group. I was not super familiar with them. I knew Lexi from when you know the earlier show. Yeah, I think Lexi and Erica were the only two that you knew, and I knew I had known. I was familiar with Katie's work, but I didn't know her. Um, um, but yeah, we, we basically looked at the portfolio that was on offer looked at the interview videos that they sent and um, you know once but the main thing was that that initial bundle of art uh, let's jump there was a question back here yeah <coughs> uh, you know actually this is sort of the beauty of the internet where we really don't have to adhere to any specific format so I think this first episode was 16 minutes I think this next episode is 10 minutes. That comes out on Tuesday. And then on Friday, it's, I think, 20 minutes. It might, it might have to be. Yeah, I mean, it's, it really runs the gamut in terms, of, in terms of length. We try not to go any longer than 20 minutes just because watching uh, something of that length on your computer is tough. But otherwise, that should be the range. Did we 
double up? Yeah, I think you did. Go ahead. Did we ever consider pitching it to TV? Uh, no. We hate working with those guys. Like, I mean, honestly, yeah. it's... If, if you could choose not to, you wouldn't. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the reality is that we can do it all ourselves, have total control over it, and not have to worry about, you know, anybody else. It's perfect. Um, yeah, it never even, it never occurred to us to try to go to TV. That's just a huge pain. Maybe they'll come sniffing around after they see how great the show is yeah, and how awesome all the people on it are. But we'll see. Jerry, you fix you fix oh, I did, yeah. Person. This healthy young person here. So how do we get connected with the loading ready run crew? Well, I think you guys and specifically were, Graham? You guys already connected with them because they had the, the big Desert bus. Show, yeah. You know, actually, so he was picked, he was approached very early on as being the production company. Right. But we did not have a host until, I think, a month out before filming. And we were sort of struggling with who it should be and whether there actually should be a host. Like, that's sort of how, how, uh, how malleable that conversation was at the time. And it, uh, it dawned upon us that he would be, you know, a, a very good choice. Um, uh, just based on, of course, all this stuff with, with Check Boy and all the stuff he does with, with Penny Arcade. And, uh, and since he was going to be on site anyway. And I don't know. Our, our, only fear, our only fear is that occasionally they don't let him into the U.S. Yeah, that is, that is the problem. Because of, of some of the BS he gets up to. Yeah, so he's Canadian, if you could not tell, if he had gained the boots. <laughs> uh, okay, back here. Uh, my my biggest worry was, I mean, it's a reality TV show, you know. You're, they they want to get the stuff that'll be most interesting to watch, which is usually people fighting and people looking like jackasses. And I mean, I I knew I was going to give them footage of that, and it's like that will be on the internet <laughs> forever. Um, and and like people in my studio were like Erica. Oh, and also the thing is, I'm super sensitive. I I am a delicate flower, and so like people being mean to me, I I don't handle that well. Um, and so everybody in my studio was like, Erica, you idiot, what are you doing going on a reality TV show? You are not cut out for that. But um, so yeah, looking, looking like a big jerk on the internet was, was my fear. Yeah, I think that's accurate. Yeah? But it was such like a nebulous, like I feel like I had very little idea of what exactly it was gonna be going in, but it was like so nebulous and large that I was like, I don't really know what this thing is. And it was like kind of just a general sense of like, the worry that like seeped into everything, but it was pretty mild because it was so like distributed. But I actually, um, I, I sent Robert an email back back when I made the cut. And before I accepted though, I was like, okay, listen, I, I really love what you guys have done with Penny Arcade the series. Like I have watched every episode multiple times. I, I love that show. And I really love how it, it focuses on people interacting with each other and creating something and camaraderie and like this family. And I said, okay, so I really like that. I also super love trashy reality TV. <laughs> and I, I said, Robert, I don't know if you remember that, but I was like, Robert, which of the reality TVs is this gonna be? Is this gonna be more like what you guys have already been doing? Or is this gonna be like America's Next Top Model, which I love, but I just wanna know what I'm getting into. And then you told me it was probably gonna be more like the, uh, the Penny Arcade TV, although, you did say, like, you can't promise anything. <laughs> yeah, I said I could not promise anything. But, yeah. but what we were shooting for was yeah. was less trash, but, uh, you know, more high concept stuff. Well, yeah. or, or listen, and, and this is, maybe this is another way to put it, because in the premiere, there is a little bookend at the very beginning that is basically us, you know, like in the regular series, where we're, where we're just talking in the chairs. And I think that it's, I mean, to the extent that it has a trashy reality show thing, it is aware of its own trashiness, right? Like, it is, it is, it knows about that stuff, and there's a lot of, in my opinion, winking toward that type yeah. of material. You know what I mean? Still going with questions? Anybody? Oh, five minutes? Oh, yeah, okay. five.
Yeah, yeah, we, uh, yeah, we did. Was that, I, so assuming that was on purpose. No. Uh, it was not purpose. Okay. No, you'd think. No, when we got down to the final 12, we were like, wait a second, we have six guys and six girls. <laughs> How did that happen? No, it was crazy. Yeah, I, yeah that's no, a good you, idea though. Next time we should do that. You would think. <laughs> you would think we had planned it. We didn't have to this time. Was there a cap on how much stuff you could bring to the house? We had a hat limit. Well, I think my oh sorry. No, no, you go, oh, ahead, you go ahead. I think my limit was like I was I was terrified I was gonna lose something on my way up here or like. I, I flew in, which I assume is okay to... Oh, yeah. Are you allowed to say that? No, that's no. all right. <laughs> um, and I was like, I didn't want to... I was like, everything, like, I, I tried to pare down for a carry-on, because I was like, mm -hmm. if I lose something, like, that's going to be real unpleasant. Like, it's one thing to lose, like, a bag when you're on vacation, but I was like, I don't, like, just yeah, I, to be as sure as I could be. They, they paid for our plane tickets, but you still had to pay for your check-on luggage, so I really tried to keep that down. So I was like, fifty dollars, fuck. So, um, so I was. I think I just had one suitcase and one enormous backpack, so that I could spend as little amount of money getting up there as possible. Uh, just real quick, my boys. Whenever the pink-haired girl talks, just cover your ears. Oh, sorry, did I swear? <laughs> I don't even remember Sorry, what I said. <laughs> whenever she says anything, just earmuffs. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Uh, any other questions? Oh, yeah, over here. Uh, for the artists, did you like, have ideas about things that you wanted to do when you came on the show, or did it was all just as you felt based on the play? Uh, so the question is, did we have ideas for what we wanted to create on the show? Like, they didn't know what the challenges were going were gonna to be. Yeah, I mean, yeah. keep in mind, there's no previous history. There's no previous season of Strip Search. Like, you, when you go into Survivor, you know pretty much what you're right. going to do. Yeah. They're entering a black box. But they had no idea what the structure or construct Even of Even down to the point where when two of them showed up at the studio for an elimination challenge, they didn't know what that was going to be. Mm -hmm. And I think, I'm pretty sure that when people went back to the house after, you know, the elimination challenge, I don't think they said what happened right they were not allowed to because you know we'd be like what what's going on in there what's going on there and be like mm, sorry i can't tell you yeah they yeah. told they may have said that they were not allowed so we to, did not but institute i can tell you that, that rule we let Wait, them are know. you kidding <laughs> no. We <let> them, <laughs> no they were absolutely what, allowed what we to. let them know was it is we specifically said it is up to you on what you would like yes. to divulge to the other <laughs> Wait, okay, I'm <laughs> good earmuffs try, earmuffs earmuffs <laughs> suggest <laughs> Suggest so you know. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Treacherous. <laughs> and so, like, after this whole experience, they're all, like, BFFs on Twitter and stuff. Know, right? and it's like, I don't know if that's going to last. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> so that, uh, one, one more? One more question. We'll go right here. Yeah. So, along those lines, now that you've, you know, done a whole season of this and, you know, a lot of reality shows and been going through several seasons, and at that point, you know, people start to go, oh, I think I figured, I figured it out. The system, you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, oh yeah, we definitely took a lot of notes about, you know, and, and even as the show was filming, we were, we were watching how the contestants were reacting and changing the rules a lot of times as we went, like saying, okay, this isn't working, we gotta do, we gotta change something a little bit here. So, absolutely, if we do another season, um, we'll, we, we'll have a lot to go on that we learned from yeah, this Yeah, it's, it's like working on an engine while it's running, yeah. when the show is actually going on, and as soon as it was over, we're like, alright, we learned a lot about that process. How can we build that in next time? Yeah. I, that's my fantasy. We would like to, yeah. It really depends on how well the first season does. So. It's not filming now. So I mean. go, go watch the first episode. Tell your friends to watch it. Tell them to tell their friends. And then watch it again. And then watch it again. <laughs> yeah. And tweet right, hashtag well. strip search. That's yep. right. Hashtag strip search. All right, I got. We're, we're getting we're getting the the call. So thank you everyone for thank coming. Thank you for coming. Oh, thanks. Thanks for having us. Oh, like he doesn't hear that at all.